Hello and welcome to video 13.2. Tonight we are going to look at the last two colligative properties of freezing point depression and boiling point elevation. So in our last video we looked at freezing point depression and boiling point elevation and we realized that when we added a solute it is either going to lower or raise one of these properties. To do so we have a small equation we are going to need to remember. In this equation, we are going to have a constant. The constant is called the molal freezing point constant, and we know it's the freezing point because it's Kf. K is just the symbol for the constant. F means it's the freezing point. Or we're going to have the molal boiling point constant, in which B stands for the boiling, and K, again, is just a symbol for the constant. This is the freezing point depression, or boiling point elevation, of a solvent in a one molal solution of a non-volatile, non-electrolyte solution. So you can see something going on here. We've got molality, molal, molal. So you're probably going to have to remember how to find molality in order to do the equations to figure out how much our freezing point was depressed or our boiling point was elevated. Well, the constants are different for each solvent. The solvent we are going to focus on is water. These you will have to memorize, so know these. If I should give you a solvent other than water, I will give you the Kf or the Kb value that you will be seeking out. But for water, you should be able to remember these two numbers. Again, the F for freezing, the B for boiling. So what are the equations, you ask? Well, here they are. Freezing point, point depression. The delta for the symbol means a change, so the depression is how much it has changed for temperature and freezing. Uh, so delta Tf equals Kf, remember Kf is that constant, and M. So Kf is your constant, M is your molality, and T is temperature. This time it is going to be in degrees Celsius, so there's no changing to Kelvin in this case. Boiling point elevation, you can see we still have the same symbol, delta T, but B for boiling. So our equation is basically exactly the same. Our delta T B equals K B M. B just means boiling. So the only difference between the two equations is going to be that constant value that you plug into it. Let's try some then. So what is the freezing point depression of water in a solution of 17.1 grams of C12H22O11 and 200 grams of water? What then is the actual freezing point of the solution? So we know the first thing we should do is find out our mol molality. So we're going to take our 17.1 grams of C12 h 22 11 and turn it into moles. So looking up the molar mass, we get 342 grams. So that is under one mole. We do the math and we get 0 0.05 moles. Now we're going to divide that by kilograms of water. So this is in grams, so remember to go to kilograms. We're going to go one, two, three backwards. So this is going to be 0 0.20 kilograms, which is going to give us 0.25 molal. So now we're going to plug this into our equation. So delta T F, since we are freezing, equals K F times M. So delta T we don't know yet. So this is our X. This is going to equal K F. So this is the freezing point constant. So this is negative 1.86 
and we're going to multiply it by the molality that we just figured out is 0.25. So that means x equals negative point, oops, 465 Celsius degrees. So the negative just means that we have lowered the value. So the freezing point depression is negative 0.465 Celsius degrees. But that is not the actual freezing point. So what is our actual freezing point? Well, I guess we need to know what is the freezing point of water. Well, water's freezing point is 0 degrees Celsius. So we would take for the actual, because remember this is just delta T, this is how much it changes. So the actual would be 0 minus, because remember negative means we're lowering it, 0.465, which gives us negative 0.465 degrees Celsius. Now the difference in Celsius degrees and degrees Celsius. Celsius degrees suggest that we are changing by a certain amount. Degrees Celsius would be the actual temperature. And before when I said negative 0.465 wasn't the actual freezing point, well I guess if you're using water and you're lowering from zero, it's going to actually be the actual freezing point. But if we didn't use water, we would get a different number, we would have a different freezing point, so you would have to know that negative just means you need to lower it or subtract from that number. Trying another one. A water solution contains an unknown quantity of a non-electrolyte solute and found to have a freezing point of negative 0.23 degrees Celsius. What is the molality of the solution? So again, we want to plug in to our equation, so I have delta Tf, since I'm still looking at the freezing point, equals Kf times m. This time I know my delta T. My delta T is negative 0.23 Celsius degrees. Again, because we are using water, whatever the changes or the freezing point is, it's also our delta T. So this equals our Kf, which is just a constant, negative 1.86, which means then molality is my x. So all I need to do is do the math. So to do the math, I'm going to take negative 0.23, and I'm going to divide it by negative 1.86, which means my molality is going to be 0.12 molal. So again, the negatives should cancel. We shouldn't get a negative molality. It should always be a positive number. So if you did, there's a good chance you may have uh, used the wrong constant. Let's look at boiling point. So we want to know the boiling point elevation of a solution made from 20 grams of a non-electrolyte solute and 400 grams of water. Molar mass of our solute is 62 grams. So once again, we need to start by finding the molality. So I have 20 grams of my unknown, so lucky for us, they told us that it is 62 grams in one mole. So 20 divided by 62 gives me 0.32 moles. And then I am going to divide that by the kilograms. So 0.4 kilograms, and I get 0.8 molal. So now I'm going to plug it into my equation. So delta Tb this time, since I am boiling, equals my Kb, so it's a new constant. So this time it's going to be 0.51. So remember we're looking at Kb for the constant times our molality, which is 0.8. So our delta Tb equals 0.41 
Celsius degrees. So we have raised the boiling point by 0 0.41 degrees. A solution contains 450 grams of C12H22O11, a non-electrolyte dissolved in 250 grams of water. What is the boiling point of the solution? So again, you'll notice it asks for the actual boiling point, not the boiling point elevation. So once again, we probably need to know the boiling point of water. And that is 100 degrees Celsius. So we need to keep that in mind when we get to the end of this problem. Other than that, the first thing we need to do is find the molality. So we have 450 grams of C12H22O11 times our line. Divide it by the molar mass, which is 342 grams in one mole. And that gives us 1.32 moles. Divide that by kilograms of water. So 1, 2, 3.25 kilograms. And I get a molality of 5.28. Now, plugging that into my equation, looking for my delta TB. So I need my KB value this time, again, because I'm boiling, times my molality, and my delta TB becomes 5.79 Celsius degrees. So now when I want to know what my actual boiling point is, since it's positive, I'm going to add it. So my boiling point is going to be 100 plus 5.79 or 105.79 degrees Celsius. Now everything we've been talking about so far has been a non-electrolyte. So what if we have an electrolyte? So this is a compound that's going to totally split down into its ions uh, so that it co can conduct electricity. So due to the total dissociation of ions, it is going to have a greater effect on the colligative properties more than a non-electrolyte would. The amount that the property is affected will depend on the moles of ions that dissociate. For example, if we look at NaCl and we break it down into its ions, we're going to have Na plus, Cl minus, and we're going to have one of each because there's no subscripts. So that means we'll have two moles of ions total, which means it will be two times more than a non-electrolyte, so it will change it two times more. If we have BaNO3 2, Ba is positive 2, NO3 is negative 1, but we have two of them. So if we have one of these, two of these, we have three moles of ions total. So it's going to cause that change to be three times more than a non-electrolyte. So how do we do these problems then if we have an electrolyte? Well, it's actually only one extra step. So a solution consists of 10.3 grams of an electrolyte, BaNO32, dissolved in 250 grams of water. What is the freezing point depression of this solution? We're going to go about things the same way not worrying about it being an electrolyte till the end. So the first thing we need to do is take our 10.3 grams and change it into molality or into moles so that we can find the molality. Uh, so finding, sorry, this is of BaNO32. So finding the molar mass, we have 261 grams in one mole. So 10.3 divided by 261, and we get 0.04 moles. Divide that by kilograms of water, because water is our solvent. 
So 0.25 kilograms gives us a molality of 0.16. Now I'm going to plug that into my equation. So delta Tf equals negative 1.86, again Kf value because we are freezing, times our molality, 0.16. So delta Tf equals negative 0 0.30 Celsius degrees. This is where then I take into account I have an electrolyte. So let's look at BANO32. If this dissociates, it gives me Ba plus 2, oops, I forgot that, plus 2 NO3 minus. So total moles is 1 plus 2, which equals 3. So this is important, this 3 total moles that I get, because I am going to take this number and I am going to multiply my change by that total number of moles. So negative 0.3 times 3 means with the electrolyte, my delta Tf is actually negative 0.9 Celsius degrees.